Biz, thanks for checking out this video. I want to talk about two different ways that you can move beyond the emotion of fear. So fear is a natural human emotion. It comes up for all of us and it comes up anytime that we're trying to uh, do something different. Anytime we're trying to either take on something we haven't done before or experience something we haven't experienced before. Maybe it's a new challenge. Maybe it's a new job. Maybe it's a new situation that we're not familiar with. Anytime we experience these things and especially anytime we try to make significant changes in our life, it's natural for this emotion of fear to come up. It comes up for all of us. And I want to share two ways that we can move beyond it when it shows up for us, because what's more important than understanding what fear is, is understanding how to move past it or move beyond it. So a little bit more about where fear comes from. Fear comes from our imagination of a negative outcome in the future. So we either think about, we visualize uh, some outcome that could happen if we were to do something either differently or trying something new. Uh, this negative imagined outcome is where that fear really comes from. It plants that seed for that fear. And when we haven't done something before, there's a lot of uncertainty about how we might perform and uh, the safety in our, in our own sense of survival if we were to engage in something new. And the greater the risk or the greater the challenge, the greater sense of fear could come up because the greater uncertainty uh, of, of our success and the greater possibility that we might experience one of those possible negative outcomes. So our understanding or the, the lack of certainty over our future success is where that comes from. So one of the ways to move beyond fear is to do things that help improve our self-esteem. Self-esteem and self-efficacy is our estimate of ourself. It's our estimate of our ability to perform uh, when facing certain challenges or when certain obstacles are presented. So the higher the self-esteem or self-efficacy we have, the greater uh, confidence that we have in ourselves that when something comes up, we'll be able to deal with it, we'll be able to survive it, and we'll be able to move beyond it. Now, if we have a, a past where we've had a lot of failures, had a lot of setbacks, there's a lot of things that we regret, a lot of remorse over some of the things that we've done or experienced in our past, these are all things that can wear down our self-esteem. So if you've had a past, if you've gone through a, you know, a period of your life or a chapter of your life where you have a lot of things that you might have done wrongly or done incorrectly or places where you felt like you failed or didn't perform as well as you could have, then it's very important to understand ways to improve your self-esteem because chances are very high that you're suffering from a low self-esteem. And if fear is something that comes up for you often or you're, you feel overcome by fear, then that's a very good indication that your self-esteem could use some work. And there's different things that you can do to improve your self-esteem. Uh, one thing I love to work people, uh, people that I work with, one thing I love to help them do is create a list of wins that they've had in their life. Uh, it's too often we can remember, we very quickly remember the failures that we've had. We very quickly remember our defects or the times that we've done the wrong thing or times that we've let people down or times that we've failed. These things are much more present on our mind. Our minds are geared to identify and to remember things that could be potential threats to the future. So if we've made mistakes in the past, if we've experienced failures in the past, these are all things that could uh, threaten our future successes. So these things are ready, readily on our mind all the time. If we can take some time and make a deliberate effort and set the intention of remembering the successes that we've had in our life, for all of us, no matter how many mistakes or how many troubles we've experienced in the past, we also have a tremendous number of wins, a tremendous number of times that we've done the right thing, made the right decision, um, experienced that success, overcome the challenge, overcome the obstacle. There's a long list of things that you've learned, ways that you've grown, things that you've done that are good. And if you can make that, take that, um, that effort to remind yourself of these by making a list, this can be one thing that really helps improve your self-esteem. Another thing that you can do is just taking little risks and watching how you progress or watching and, and remembering or realizing that you are successful as you take those small steps or those small risks and, and look at, you know, whether it's at the beginning or the end of the day or at the end of the week, make a list of things that you've accomplished, things that you've done, because the more that we can remind ourselves of things that we've done and been successful with, the greater sense of self-esteem that we'll have. So if we can do these things to improve our self-esteem, then our confidence in our ability to survive a certain risk or a challenge or obstacle in the future is uh, much lower. The greater the self-esteem, the lower the perceived risk, and therefore the less amount of fear comes up in us as that emotion. And if fear is 
comes up too much or if we have experienced too much fear, then too often it stops us from doing anything. And unfortunately, it's that, it's that motion that we need. It's taking that action that we need that's going to ultimately help us move forward, help us improve our self-esteem and help us reach those things that we're working towards, those things that are worthwhile in our life. So all these things work together and we must understand them so that fear doesn't, um, doesn't overshadow all of our ambition and our self-esteem and our ability to perform or our ability to succeed in our life. Another way that you can overcome fear is by really being clear about your purpose in life. Having a very strong sense of purpose is one way that a lot of people move beyond the obstacles and the challenges that, that normally bring up fear because for them or for us, when you have a very uh, well-established sense of purpose, then you don't think about those obstacles that might come up because you realize that no matter what comes up for you, you're going to have to find a way to move beyond it. You're going to have to find a way to navigate around that challenge or that obstacle or learn the skill or develop uh, the skills and find the resources that you'll need to succeed. If your purpose is strong enough, it will pull you through from the other side. So if you have a low sense of purpose, if you don't really know what your purpose or your objectives are for your life, what really matters to you and what you're working towards, if you don't have that strong sense of purpose, it it can't be used to help you pull uh, help pull you beyond those things where the fear is going to come up in your life. So one way to move beyond fear is to really think about and establish a strong sense of purpose in your life. If you've ever struggled with a lack of meaning or purpose in your life or just natural sources of joy, I'd love to invite you to become part of a challenge that I'm conducting starting next week. It's called Five Days to Greater Meaning, Purpose, and Joy in Your Life. And in just five days, I'll share some exercises and some lessons with you that will really help you increase and experience greater sense of meaning, purpose, and joy. And when you have that strong sense of purpose, when you have a lot of meaning in your life, it can be that thing that will help pull you forward when other things are trying to knock you back or hold you down. So a very important thing for your life, extremely important if you're in recovery. I'd love for you to be a part of that challenge. Please drop your comments in the link below, um, and I would love to uh, hear anything that you have to say, anything that you have to add about this topic or about any other topic of life and recovery. You be well, and I'll see you soon in another video.